Welcome to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your hosts, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. All right, we're back for another episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. I'm Matt. <laughs> I'm not Matt. I'm looking at Matt. I'm Joe Fear, and I'm with my co-host Matt Wolf across the table, and we're with Andy Hassong out of uh, Indiana, right, Andy? That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So Andy is an amazing connector, and that's how I think we we uh, we met you at various parties over the years. But um, <laughs> so yeah, Andy Andy is like the master business connector. He's he's the first guy we think of when it comes to making deals, you know, joint venture deals, affiliate partners, kind of connecting us even to people uh, to you know promote their products as affiliates, since that's a big part of our business. So. Um, that's what Andy's done for the last like 12 years or so. And, and yeah, so hopefully if we could deconstruct, um, uh -oh. <laughs> I might take some, sorry, we're looking at some live video here. Um, yeah, for, for you, uh, if you guys, um, who are listening, we're actually doing some Facebook live video at the same time. So, um, I might have to do, uh, some tech while we're doing that but um yeah so that's we're, we're not going to edit this out of the podcast because we're 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 cool we're so andy yeah so we're um uh yeah so let's let's dig into it andy and and i let's get your quick background i don't want to go too deep on it uh cool. maybe spend a couple minutes of how you got into the biz and and uh kind of what you do sure well uh basically uh, for the last 12 plus years i've been helping set up online joint ventures uh, primarily in the online marketing space, you know, internet marketing, uh, uh, make money online, e-commerce, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it really started back when I met a guy by the name of John Reese at a live event back in 2004. Or actually, I met him in 2002 at a live event. We became friends, and then he asked me to become his affiliate manager mm. in uh, late 2004, uh, right after the launch of Traffic Secrets. Uh, which is known as, you know, the million dollar day or what, whatever. And um, I had helped a little bit during that launch, but I wasn't his uh, actual affiliate manager at the time. And so for five years, I helped him. And during that time, I, I kind of learned the ins and outs of, you know, what it takes to get someone's attention to, uh, you know, so they're interested in recommending your products uh, as an affiliate. Mm -hmm. I learned ways not to do that by the way we were approached to promote their offers and so on. And so during that time, you know, I gained that experience. And then once he decided to get out of teaching online or internet marketing in late uh, 2009, I started working with other clients to help with their launches and webinars and so on. And so I've just done a lot of that since that time as well, done some training hmm. on that topic as well. Yeah. And just so folks who are listening don't know who John Reese is, Back in the day, yeah, like you said, the million dollar launch. He was supposedly the first guy to ever hit a million dollars with a, what an information marketing, like an internet marketing product, yeah, an info product type product launch online. So that was how many years ago was it? You yeah, said? that was in. Uh, I think he launched it. It was in August of two thousand four, mm -hmm. and he actually did that in one day. Uh, yeah, just from doing an actual product launch, Jeff Walker style. There you go. Yeah. So he was like, he just set the bar and it's kind of like what the four minute mile, that whole thing. Yeah. It was like yeah. once, once he did it, everyone was like, wait a minute, it is possible. <laughs> Make a million in <laughs> right. a day. Holy crap. Yep. Um, amazing. Yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't know that that's how you kind of get started or at least that's where you, know, you worked with him for a long time. Uh huh. Got it. Yep. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah. And then, so, so now you're, um, you're obviously doing your own thing and you've done that for a long time. Right. Um, yeah. And webinars are huge. So, so I guess, uh, what is in, so what's your big, uh, your big, uh, superpower, I would say, is it, is it making those connections or is it your, your amazing people skills? <laughs> <laughs> what's your, well, what is it? Well, you know, um, you know, as you know, when you've done something for so long, it's kind of hard to, uh, pinpoint exactly what that is sometimes. But for myself, I think it's really being able to tap into what makes people tick mm -hmm. and really caring about them first and finding out what it is they're looking for. And, uh, you know, based on that, then just providing them with guidance. Uh, and so when it comes to joint ventures and such, I guess the superpower would be to find out what, what a, uh, company's audience or their, the people on their list, 
uh, you know, is really looking for, what resonates with them, and then potentially finding uh, an offer or a webinar or something that would be a fit for them and then just matching them up. And so I think that's kind of my, uh, I guess if you call it a superpower, Mm -hmm. um, it would be that kind of thing right there. Got it. Yeah. No, and I think that's really good. And in terms of, you know, and connectors, you know, did you, I guess, have you ever done this outside of, um, I'm trying to think, you, you know, not only these business deals, but did you kind of start with just being a connector in general, like seeing an issue and then finding a someone who can kind of solve the issue and connecting yeah. the two together? You mean before uh, all of this? Yeah. Uh, setting up joint ventures? Yeah. You know, well, I, it's funny because I actually have always been what you would call, I guess, a people person. Mm-hmm. I've always really mm-hmm. cared, you know, about the other person, you know, probably just starting from my parents the way they brought me up to, you know, um, do on do unto others as you'd have them do unto you Mm -hmm. and uh, studied psychology in college because I wanted to be a child psychologist and, and heck, you know, I was always matchmaking back in the day, setting up friends with with girls and vice versa. (laughs) Were you? I I was the nice guy, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I was the, I was odd man out back in uh, my younger days, but uh, it wasn't my twenties. I figured that out. But anyway, (laughs) that's that's all right. all, All to get well late. I should say my late teens. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's, you know, I think um, in the early days, it was all about, you know, just caring enough about other people to, to uh, help them, you know, just make different types of connections. And when I w- didn't even realize that there was an opportunity to do that mm-hmm. as a career, you know. That is interesting. I mean, there's so many people out there who are brokers, and that's essentially what you are just for making these um you know, these for, for now it's, you know, it's kind of webinar and, and affiliate deals like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's part of what I do for sure. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. So, so we're, so this podcast, we're all about systems, processes, formulas, automation, that kind of stuff. Now, are there any sort of systems or processes or anything automated, anything like that, that you do in your business that, that helps the business keep cranking along, but allows you to sort of step back on, on specific things? Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, it wasn't until maybe about a year and a half ago that I really kind of dialed in what my process is because I always did it through hustle, Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you know, just really, you know, knowing how to get the job done, just doing it. But what I did was I sat back and I uh, put together kind of a, a plan of action just based on, you know, what I normally do. And I came up with an acronym. Um, it's actually two acronyms uh, that I'll just combine together. And the first one is partner, and which is appropriate for what we're talking about today, you know, cr- setting up partners to promote one another. Uh, the other acronym is power, P-O-W-E-R. And so you put that together, it's partner power, which sounds kind of hokey maybe, <laughs> but but if you can remember partner power, um, you know, as an acronym, uh, this will really help you, first of all, to dial in kind of the overall process or overall mindset that you want to have when it, when you're interested in bringing on JV partners and affiliates to promote your stuff that will not only attract them to you, but also motivate them to continue taking action and really love being a part of your affiliate program, for instance. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, so you want to break part- that down? Yeah. Yeah. So the partner side, and that's just the partner side and the right. power side, I'll get to in a second, but the partner side, what that stands for and um, I'll let you guys, after I say what partner um, represents, mm-hmm. I'll let you guys determine how much in depth you want me to go into. With sure. That. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, so this, uh, it, it all comes down to these things. So the P stands for prepare and you might think of it as prepare to persuade partners to promote <laughs> a lot mm. of P's there, right? Mm-hmm. Say that five times fast. <laughs> uh, so, so in the early stages, you really want to just get, prepared with all the ammo that you're going to have to have to convince these partners to even consider promoting you in the first place. Mm -hmm. And part of that preparation uh, entails uh, pinpointing your ideal JV partners. Um, And I call them endorsed traffic partners, but we we don't need to get into all that today. But but the the basic idea is that you just want to prepare, make sure you've got all your ducks in a row before you even start reaching out to anybody. Mm, Smart. Yeah, okay. don't just don't just sling you know sling deals willy nilly. Actually, think yeah. about what you're doing beforehand. Sure. Yeah, it's it's really no different than when you're selling a product or if you're a coach and you're selling your coaching. You don't just 
uh, throw up a web page and say, here, come buy my product, mm -hmm. you get prepared with it, with all the details, right? Love so it. It's the same thing. And so the next, the A stands for approach and attract. So there are different ways you go about making sure that the way you reach out to people is done in such a fashion that it, it brings people on board or, you know, at least initially engages them in a conversation and makes them take notice of what it is you have uh, so that you don't scare them away. And, you know, so one of the things I learned back in the day, I told you when I worked with John Reese mm -hmm. during those times, people would reach out in such a way that make me think, man, you know, this guy only cares about himself. He doesn't even care what we're even interested in. Mm -hmm. And so you want to reach out to them with that in mind, you know, really thinking about what is in it for the other person. Got it. So it's your messaging. It's the way you even approach the deal. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Absolutely. Yep. And then, uh, so the, so that's the A in partner, the R in partner is for retain and that's retain your first partners. So you get them locked into a promotion. could be a product launch, could be a webinar or what have you. But, but what you want to do is just, is get them to a point where, okay, they've, they've seen everything uh, about your opportunity and then you get them locked into a specific date to start promoting your product or service. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's always the first step. And your first goal should only be to get that first partner. It's not to get a bunch of affiliates on board as fast as you can. Yeah, that's great. And, and of course, for a product launch, you want to have as many as you can. Mm -hmm. But your first goal, especially for webinars, is to focus on getting one solid partner on board, get them locked in. And then you're off to the races. Got it. And then also retain them probably for more than one, just, you know, just one deal, but maybe, absolutely. maybe it's a percentage yep. or, or just a handful of deals. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and see, that's where the, the last half of this acronym comes into place. Uh -huh. All right. Carry other, on. <laughs> yeah. If you do these other things, you'll get these people want to continue promoting for you. So uh, the next thing is uh, the T in partner is track. You want to track the progress and the results of the campaign that you run for that particular JV partner, or maybe you've got two or three people promoting, uh, you know, an offer or whatever. Uh, but you want to track the results of that, and then along the way, you know, make sure you're congratulating them on the initial results they're getting, update them, you know, as the promotion's going on and so on, and then ultimately. Um, you know, track the conversions mm -hmm. of that promotion so that you can leverage those, those results to get more partners on board. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. I like it so far. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, hopefully it keeps going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, the next letter in partner is the N and the word that you should remember for this is just nurture. You want to nurture the relationship you have with the initial partners that you're working with. And the first thing that you should do to make that happen is to pay them, very, uh, pay them quickly hmm. or at least on time. You know, make sure you're paying them when you say you're going to pay them. Mm -hmm. And uh, because that's one of the, the big things that happens in our industry, unfortunately, is, is uh, vendors get amnesia and they're all fired up about getting someone on board to promote their webinar or their launch or evergreen product. But then the payment doesn't come when it's supposed to. And, sure. And, you know, you can lose really trust takes, immediately. Yeah. 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 And that's, you know, that's the easiest way to, you know, to really start nurturing that relationship because once you've paid them quickly, they know, Hey, I can trust this guy. Mm -hmm. And wow, this, this promotion went well, what else do you have? And so that's how you start building the blocks, you know, the building blocks for them to want to continue promoting for you. Got it. Road. Right on. And then, yeah. And then the next letter in the word partner is expand. And I'll just call it expand your reach or expand and scale. Hmm. This is where, you know, you reach out to the rest of your potential partners on your list. And what I didn't get into, which, you know, like I said, I didn't want to get into too much depth on this uh, podcast interview, but <laughs> uh, during the um, uh, approach and attract portion, that's where, you know, you really want, or actually, let me just go back to the very beginning, the, the prepare. You know, when I told you about pinpointing your ideal traffic partners, you mm -hmm. want to brainstorm like your top 50 of the people that you know in your niche, people you've met at live events, uh, people uh, your masterminds with, past customers and clients or current customers and clients and so on, and just really get down that list. But then you really only want to reach out to your first maybe five to 10 really high level contacts that are most likely to respond to you. Mm. And so those are the ones you're really trying to reach out to in the early stages to get the first partners on board 
that you can then leverage. And so then, you know, when, again, when you get down to the expanded scale, that's where you a- approach the rest of your list yep. and, and really, you know, uh, leverage the fact that, Hey, we got uh, so-and-so was on board, did, you know, X number of conversions. Here's a case study or testimonial from them that uh, talks about what it was like to work with us and so on. And that's when really things start to get some momentum going. And, um, and I've got like, I think 12 bullet points listed here. I'm not going to go through <laughs> of ideas, you know, that, you know, gives you for expanding from this point. But that's the main thing to keep in mind when you get to this um, part in the that process. Part. Got it. Okay. So it's kind okay. of starting with that lowest uh, hanging fruit almost, you know, with yep. the prepare with the first initial partners. And then, and then obviously you can use those as yep. social proof. Yeah. Totally. And you'd mm-hmm. be surprised how many people I talk to who reach out to me and I, I will actually sell people on not using my services to go out and get JV partners for them until they've tapped into their low hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. You have no many, no idea how many times that I've mentioned the phrase low hanging fruit. <laughs> it's one of our favorite. Yeah. 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 And so many people will say, Oh, I didn't even think about that. Or I didn't think about this person. And one of the bit, best things you can do just as a little tip is start thinking right now, if you've got a product, uh, like some kind of a course or software that you're thinking of releasing, and maybe you've been talking about it with your friends, your mastermind or whatever for a while, um, think of the people who have told you, Hey, whenever you, uh, let me know when you have that out, I'll, pr- I'll promote that for you. Yeah. Think it, about that. You know, uh, you may have one or two people or even more that have said that to you already. And those are the ones to get with right, right now and say, look, you know, I've already, I've got this thing done. I'm going to have a webinar ready in a couple of weeks. Um, I'd love for you to consider, uh, sharing this with your audience mm-hmm. and, uh, see what they say. So that's the best way to go about that. Love it. Uh, All right. And then we have the R as the yeah, last the one. Yeah, the R. Yeah. And this is the fun one. I and mean, <laughs> this is, this is related to the nurture part of things, but it's reward and recognize. Mm. And so obviously you want to continue paying people on time and mm-hmm. so on, but there are a lot of other things you can do just to give people kudos for a job well done. It could be somebody who made their first sale. You just, um, uh, you know, call them out, not call them out, but, mm-hmm. uh, give them props in a, uh, and in an email you send to your affiliates, you can mention it on Facebook. Um, you've got a Facebook group that's dedicated to your affiliates. You can uh, put a post in there just recognizing some of your partners and so on. And then just surprise them with uh, bonuses and, and gifts from time to time, you know, yeah. especially your top you know, 10 partners or whatever, just mm-hmm. uh, out of the blue. And yeah. because tell you what, you know, a lot of people talk about how, they want to get affiliates and these are my affiliates and so on, but <laughs> affiliates are fickle and they, right. you know, they have all kinds of offers that they can promote and they're getting contacted daily about the next launch or the next webinar or any, you know, or any kind of offer. And so you want to do things creatively to stay in front of them. And yeah. The best thing you do is just make sure you're taking care of your people. Now is this where like leaderboards and things like that come into play as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, leaderboards during launches, uh, you know, are powerful because of the fact, you know, look, you're recognizing these people and eventually rewarding them, you know, when they place in the top 10 or whatever with a prize of some sort. And, uh, you know, one of the powerful things too is it's social proof. When they mm-hmm. see the leaderboard, they see other people who are promoting this product like crazy. And there's a lot of bragging rights <laughs> that mm. comes into play here because oh, totally it's I, an ego I, thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a total ego thing. Yeah. And, a lot of times people care more about beating their buddy, uh, you know, in, in that leaderboard than they do and even getting the prize. Oh, and, it's uh, so true um, too. <laughs> well, you needed yeah. some of this, man. Well, I, yeah. I, I used to promote launches a lot. We really don't promote launches very much anymore. We're more into promoting things that are evergreen. So if it works once we could keep doing it, but mm-hmm. we used to promote a lot of launches and, I'll tell you what, when I used to promote a lot of launches, I was more motivated by the leaderboard than the actual money I was making off the promotions. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, why after a while, what? like prizes, I remember, because we set some of these up and really just giving out cash almost was better than saying, oh, you can win a car or or an <laughs> iPhone or whatever, you know, even yeah. though yeah. even though those look cool. Anyway. Well, I mean, th- there would be times where we'd be promoting a launch and 
I don't know what just happened, but something just popped up on my screen. Um, so there'd been times we were, we were promoting a launch and, you know, I'd be on the top 10 leaderboard and I would see like the name above me was was a Mike Phil same or an Andy Jenkins or, you know, a name that somebody like the kind of everybody in our industry recognizes. And I'm like, oh, I'm just one spot away from like Mike. Oh, I can do this, you know, and, and that really, really motivated me to to try to like oust some of the top dogs from time to time. <laughs> mm hmm. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, and by the way, guys, uh, let me know if my audio sounds okay. If you're it's good. Too loud. I know you're perfect. You're good? Okay, good. Um, so, uh, one thing related to that, uh, just on the other end of things, as a as someone who has been the kind of the guy behind the curtain, uh, creating those leaderboards for my clients during some <coughs> bigger launches and such, um, it's a lot of fun to put those names down and, and think of. Uh, little uh, statements or little, uh, I, I don't know, just uh, little messages to put in those emails that would kind of tease them and, and push people to try to beat the guy ahead of them. Mm. And knowing that, you know, even though it's kind of silly that everyone uh, knows it's coming, it still works. And, <laughs> and, yeah. so, so it's, and what's cool is behind the scenes, you may not even realize this, uh, but like if, uh, you know, you've probably reached out to a vendor who you're promoting during a launch and asked, okay, so where am I at? You know, how close am I to the next guy? Mm -hmm. Well, half the people on that leaderboard are doing the same thing. So everyone's yep. like jockeying for position and trying to beat each other. And, and the affiliate managers on the other end of things, juggling these different conversations and egos and, and all that, and trying to say all the right things and push the right buttons to get people to keep on pushing. Just one more email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just one more email. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So Matt actually just wrote a question here and this is something that we kind of question often. I know, you know, is is the one you just wrote there is what are your thoughts on the launch model, kind of like what you're describing here, versus mm -hmm. doing something evergreen where so, you know, where something you could drive paid traffic to, kind of maybe do a content, grow your own list as if it were your product, but you're promoting that product. Yeah, it kind of just sprung out of the question, uh, you know, the what I was just talking about is, you know, Joe and I, we, we're, we're big affiliates. That's sort of one of our main income streams is promoting affiliate products, but we prefer to focus on products that they're not shutting down anytime soon, or they're not, um, you know, raising the price on us anytime soon. We like evergreen products that if we get a promotion that's working, we can just double down on that promotion and keep going with it. Um, but it seems like a lot of the people in the, the marketing world, the info world, the software world, they like to do these launches where they ramp it up and sell for a week and then turn it off. So just curious on your thoughts and, um, you know, pros and cons of each. Sure. So um, just a quick question back to you. Do you mean mm -hmm. pros and cons from the affiliate side or the vendor side who who's always you know, launching stuff, taking it off the market, launching something new and so on. I would say I, I'd love your thoughts on both. I mean, because I've, I've seen it from both sides. I've been involved in launches and we've been affiliates. Um, so in my head, I kind of know the pros and cons of each side, but I'm, I am curious on your thoughts. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think there's no right or wrong. I think there's a place for all of it. And it really depends on uh, each company's personality and their goals. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to a product launch, let's just say from the vendor side, and by the way, my audio keeps, I'm watching the input and it keeps rising as I talk. So <laughs> I have to yeah, you keep saying you're, you're good. So yeah, it sounds, sounds fine on our end. So, okay, good. no worries. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, you know, so when it comes to doing the product launch from the vendor side, you know, one of the biggest reasons for doing that is to get it, make a big splash, mm -hmm. uh, get, get it out there in front of as many people as possible and create an instant business around that product. And, you know, that's a great way to go about it. And some of them do make the vendor a lot of money, but a lot of the, you know, a lot of it's paid out in affiliate fees, mm -hmm. maybe copywriting fees, um, and just different types of um, uh, fees that have to go out. And, but it's more about, you know, building that instant business to get that product out there. And then, you know, but what I don't like is, you know, taking the product off the market. I've, I've just always felt like you can create the scarcity and the sense of urgency without taking a product off the market that's supposedly so good that, you know, why would you take it, take it down? Yeah. And I do understand that, you know, there's also something to be said for, you know, if it's software, maybe you only want to have X number of people in and to make sure you take care of them and have everything set up properly. 
um, before you blow it up to more people. But a lot of times these products don't even get re-released at all mm -hmm. and, and, and so That's on. True. But, but from the, you know, the affiliate side of things, I think that it's the same thing. You've got to promote things that you feel good about that you prefer promoting. And I think that if you can find something that's evergreen, something that is, you know, has a um, longevity in terms of being able to promote this thing ongoing, I think it only makes sense to keep, you know, promoting something that keeps working. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so many of us try to, try to, you know, end up stopping something that works. Yeah. I just, right. I find it fascinating because you look in like the, the real world, I say with like air quotes, um, <laughs> outside of like the marketing info product SaaS world, you get outside of that and you look at, you know, bigger companies, they do launches all the time. Like you look at an iPhone every year, there's a new iPhone launch with a big build up to it and commercials. And we're going to be doing this keynote presentation. And there, there is that sort of build up that you get with a launch. They launch it. They have a, you know, a shit ton of sales all right in the beginning, but then they don't just go and say, okay, we we're turning it off now. So you better get it this week. You know, you know, yeah. you don't see that outside of our world. Mm. And I, and right. I always found it so fascinating that so many people would, would follow that sort of let's launch it and get as many sales as we can in a two week period and then turn it off and then nobody can have it again. Right. Exactly. And, you know, related to all that, what I think, you know, what I like is kind of a hybrid of what we're talking about. And that is um, I love webinars. I mm. love the whole live webinar type, Yep. I guess game, if you call it that, just because it's more of a rolling launch, you know, you, you work with one partner at a time, you know, uh, a lot of times weekly, you've got a new partner on board. That's right. And more sales, more customers work with another partner um, and look at it as a mini launch that you use, but um, you do uh, usually end the sales at the end of a webinar promotion. But the truth is if people, contact you after the promotion say hey can i still get in <laughs> you know most people will let you in of course <laughs> yeah right yeah. so but that's what that's what i actually you know i i basically retired from helping with launches just because there's so much time and stress <laughs> stress and, yeah i was gonna say uh, <laughs> i bet it's it, everything's last minute and this yeah. and this is where matt and i's philosophy because we came from doing launches uh i did i kind of did a lot of work similar to you not brokering but behind the scenes doing mm -hmm. uh creating the webinar slides and the presentation flow for clients of all sorts i'm sure a lot of people you know and um yeah, it, it it was so damn stressful. And then I would, it allowed me to kind of see from behind the scenes, and I know Matt, various businesses of his own, uh, were like, damn, it's just too stressful. Like, business shouldn't be that hard to just constantly have to hustle, hustle, hustle this launch thing. And, and granted, yeah, you can make a lot of money, but... Yeah, you know, there's a lot of expenses that way too. Yeah, um, and, and everybody seems to be needing things last minute in launches. Mm. I, I feel like a lot of people corners, who do launches yeah. don't don't prepare far enough ahead of the launch. You know, they they need their they need their JV manager uh, to start rounding up people a week before they go live. They need that sales video uh, three days. You know, you get the data on it three days before that video is supposed to be live, and they're contacting their copywriter four days before it's supposed to be live and it doesn't seem like a lot of these guys really do the necessary prep work. I feel like if you're going to do a launch, the right way to do a launch is to spend three months preparing. So that by the time the launch day comes, you're not stressed out. It was just kind of a, a three month process to kind of put all the pieces in place. But I don't feel like most people do it that way. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's And that's what I found too. I mean, um, just so much you're juggling during a product launch and, and you can, you know, they, they say that the, it doesn't really matter how much time you allow for anything because you're going to fill that time and yep, be yep. down to the last minute. And it's the same thing with product launches. You could have six month window and still be just, you know, slamming out that la that video, the video number one, always you know, yeah. 10 minutes before it's to be released, you know, yeah. just get it up. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> if you well, ask me. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to, recap just really fast and then i want to hit that power before we get too too okay. deep into this um or too too long uh so the partner i'm just going to recap really quick because i wrote them down so um the partner acronym i think is great because it's great it seems like you can apply it to any kind of matchmaking deal making things like that that you want to apply it doesn't have to be 
what you're doing. And I just wanted to clarify that is you could do this when you're just making, even just trying to drum up clients, um, get referrals. You know, it's a great way. It seems like to, to really hone your focus in and then process, processize this whole thing. (laughs) So partner, and I'm just going to recap really quick. So it's prepare is the P and then the A is approach, attract the right people, you know, prepares, obviously prepare and then kind of find that low hanging fruit and then go on. Uh, the R is retain, T is track, N, nurture, uh, E, expand, and the last one, R, is reward and recognize. So um, right I yeah. like it. Now let's let's hit up that uh, power acronym and let's do it a little quick because I know we're, yeah. I think we're at yeah, 30 I'll do minutes. More. Yeah, this one will be a lot quicker. And, and the power acronym is really something to keep in mind if you want to have a Uh, some type of an offer, whether it's via a webinar or a launch or an evergreen product that really uh, is exciting for partners to promote, something that is successful that people want to to keep promoting or uh, to, um, let's say you you have a webinar and you want to get a bunch of people interested in promoting it. This is what is going to help you achieve that. So this is like your offer almost to them. Yeah. Like it's that sexy, shiny object that you're like, hey, this is what I got. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Okay. Exactly. This is everything you want to have in place for that. So the partner was more of the overall mindset to have and just getting partners on board yep. uh, long term. And this is something you know for your specific offer. Cool. And so the P stands for a proven product. Uh-huh. The O stands for an offer that's irresistible. So just think about an irresistible offer. Yep. Uh, a W stands for a winning webinar or other type of sales vehicle. So it might be a, a VSL. Um, could be a sales page, could be a launch, what what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the E stands for endorsed traffic partners. So this that's where you know you you bring on endorsed traffic partners or JV partners to recommend your offer, and then you just repeat and scale after that. Repeat and, and scale. So it's really you know that power acronym is just really tightly focused on making sure you've got a product that's hot and an offer that is just completely you know, irresistible. And like Todd Brown says, you know, you want your offer to make people think they're nuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Totally. Yep. A no brainer, yeah. something where it's like, I can't believe he's, he's even doing this. Like, right. <laughs> I got to right. take yeah. him up. Yeah. Yeah. Just by showing the value and, and, um, and, you know, maybe stacking the bonuses, uh, but also, uh, you know, a really sweet no brainer, uh, refund policy, mm-hmm. guarantee, whatever, you know, just all that stuff combined. Um, I like and it. Then, yeah. Cool. And, and, and this seems like, cause it's, cause what you're doing, it, it seems like you're distilling all of this knowledge that you've had over the years, all these different partners and offers. Cause I mean, someone like in your position, you've probably seen what works and what doesn't better than almost anyone. Yeah. Just because you know the numbers inside and out from both sides, not only the vendor but the actual affiliate, like so, yeah. it's it's pretty amazing. That's why those listening, yeah, definitely exercise the partner. That's great, but like if you have a product of your own, uh, power like that whole acronym: proven product, offer, an irresistible one, winning sales vehicle of some sort, webinar, sales page, VSL. Mm-hmm. Indoors traffic partners, so get some good people who can drive traffic behind you who would be interested, could be evergreen type people or launch, um, and then repeat it. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, um, I actually want to ask a couple questions on it. We're actually a little bit over time already, but you're our last call of the day, so we'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. So <laughs> bonus. <laughs> here, here's my question about the, the, the sort of power acronym. Now, the W is winning webinar or you know a similar sales vehicle. How do you know if it's a... A, a winning sales vehicle. Um, and my question's in reference to this. I'm not going to go to an affiliate and say, you've got to promote this. This one's a winner without knowing myself that it's a winner. You know what I mean? Right. So how yeah. would you first determine that it's a winner before just before going and chasing up affiliates? Sure. Well, and first of all, um, before you even test it on your own, which might be kind of where you're headed with that. And you know what I would recommend, which is testing it internally to your own audience first right. yep. um, or with some paid traffic, what have you. Uh, the truth is uh, you don't need to do that necessarily. And I can tell you why in a minute, but I'll make this short and sweet. Uh, the first thing you want to do, yeah, let's just say with webinars, for instance, is just following a proven process 
for creating your webinar in the first place. You know, something that's proven like from uh, Russell Brunson or there are other webinar experts, uh, a friend of mine, Joel Irway right now, he, it's based off of Brunson's um, process, but he has mm -hmm. something dialed in. Amy Porterfield, Jason Fladlin, different people have proven strategies for creating a webinar that kicks butt. And so if you just plug in the pieces of your offer and your, uh, you know, what you have to you know, offer people into that webinar, then that's a good start. Uh, but to answer your question more directly, mm -hmm. what I always recommend is if you've already got an email list and, you know, to, to promote it to them first, start doing the webinar internally, uh, see how your people react to it. And if you don't have a list, if you could pay for traffic, get some Facebook ads going to get people to your sales vehicle, whether it's a webinar or whatever, that's great too. Now, you don't always have to do that. Um, and that goes back to low hanging fruit. Uh, I can't tell you how many people, I would say probably 80%, I'm just guessing, but I'm saying about 80% of the people that I've helped get JV partners for their webinars never sent it to their list first and never paid for <laughs> traffic to it first. Um, because they had just one person or, or more, but one person who was willing to give them a shot and believed in them enough to recommend that to their audience. And so on the one hand, you don't want people to be your guinea pig to be the ones that you test your webinar on. But on the other hand, there are people in your network and your closest allies who would be willing to uh, say, yeah, let me, let me see what you got here. Um, yeah, man, I would totally promote this to my audience. Let me get this out there. When do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. you know? And so that's that's my answer to that. I think that's good. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, test with the audiences that you can control. So maybe it's email, maybe it's these Facebook messenger bots. If you have subscribers there, or just even maybe even your Facebook uh, connections. You know, there's a lot of ways that you could just promote to that if you really don't have oh, yeah. a list or spend some money on cold traffic. I mean, and obviously traffic. You yeah. know, go okay. go into losing a little bit of money to test it, mm -hmm. uh, so you can know your numbers before. What does Gary Vaynerchuk say? It's like, if you're not spending at least a hundred bucks to at least like throw some eyeballs at a page to test an offer and a hundred might not be a uh, enough, but at least get some feedback, you know, initially. Right. So, well, and, and also think about this, you know, there are some people who just don't know how to do the Facebook ads, uh, don't have the cash to do it, right. and, but they have the contacts. And so they'll, um, make it sweeter for those contacts. Say, look, I'll pay you 75% commission mm -hmm. um, if you'll share this with your audience. And um, if you've got quite a bit of contacts, it's pretty pretty simple to find one person that would do it for you. But you know, obviously it's ideal if you're sending people to your own uh, list first right. and you can you know, do the paid traffic route. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the last question, Andy, um, and this is always pretty standard but i think we always learn a new book but what's what's one book that you feel like is just the number one book on your bookshelf maybe it's one that you read every year okay boy it's hard i got six listed here so I know, I know. you can list off multiple if you want we'll, we won't hold you to the one give me but. kind of a yeah <laughs> well i can tell you that the probably the most influential book for me in terms of what i do and what i think would help most people it's kind of a boring one i think to mention because it's probably something <laughs> Some people have mentioned before on your podcast, I don't know, but, but a book that I read uh, quite a few years ago is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, Dale, Dale Carnegie. Carnegie. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. a good one. And, yeah. And actually, <laughs> it's actually, I, I typed out a quote that I was going to mention at the beginning of this, you know, kind of set the stage, but just to, if you don't mind me reading this, Go one for it. Sentence, this is pretty powerful. Uh, on page 54 of that book, it says you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people mm. than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Mm -hmm. And so, and I hi had that highlighted. I was flipping through the book this morning when I was preparing for this call and I saw where I'd highlighted that probably 20 years ago. That's wow. like, you know, I've, you know, I've had this book forever since I was like 22 or something like wow. that, 46 now. So um, but I found that highlighted and I thought, man, that's the whole basis behind what I do. And so for anyone listening to this, you know, if you are looking to get JV partners on board, uh, to get referrals, collaborate with people and so on, the more you go up to people at live events and, and just really authentically care about them and ask them about them and don't think, uh, don't be thinking about what you're going to say next about you 
while they're talking and instead really listen to them. And while you're listening to them, you may think of something or someone who could help them get what they want and, and then let them know about that. And then that leads into deeper conversations and then potential deals down the road, even when you're not trying. So I think um, that's amazing. Sorry, I missed that. I wasn't listening. Can you repeat it? <laughs> you were waiting to talk. Were you on that? <laughs> no, like that's, it reminds me of two things. First thing is something from Tim Ferriss's podcast. I read in his book, the tools of Titans is mm-hmm. be first, be the first one to initiate like with a smile. When you see someone like in your neighborhood, or even just on yeah. the street and be first to maybe send a text message to someone you haven't talked to in years. Yep. I mean, and that just opens up so many doors. And then immediately they're like, Oh, he's thinking of me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and it's a, it's, it sounds simple, but then when you get in their head, you're like, Oh man, like you got control. Not, not meaning like in a bad way, but right. Anything can happen. Yeah. Well, I can give you just a really quick example here, if you don't mind. Go. Um, yeah. I'll make it 20 seconds or less. <laughs> um, this morning, I reached out to somebody. I won't say his name, but he's a marketing guy who's had some really serious health issues and has been going downhill. Mm. And I just reached out to him to see how he was and what I could do for him. And we got in a conversation, which led to me introducing him to someone else who had been going through some similar issues. And now they're supposed to talk. Mm. And the, the other guy that was going through similar issues that beat his situation through a healthy diet and, and some other things. And I just, you just wanted to help, you know, and that's it. Yeah. I'm not trying to get a JV deal going or anything like that. That's how you want to treat people in every situation in life, but also in business. And most people, you know, I won't say most, but a lot of people don't think of that. Totally. Yeah. They're in a business setting. Think, think about other people first. Yeah, even if it's just texting them a happy birthday, you know, yep. on, not on Facebook, but on their phone. And then you, yeah. know, you break through clutter and then you're top of mind. Yeah. Uh, yep, absolutely. Because you never know where those those little bits of yeah. uh, effort are going to lead. Yeah, absolutely. Right so we do have one last question. Um, where do you want to send people after listening to this episode? Where can people learn more about you? Where would you like them to go afterwards? Sure. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. Well, at this point, uh, my website is under construction (laughs) and I'm actually still determining the branding of that. So what you could do if you wanted, um, I'll just give you, um, yeah, just go to my Facebook profile. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you'd like, you can do that. You can also go to a Facebook group that I started uh, some time ago. It's called decade of deal making. Um, and the, the URL for that is decade of dealmaking.com. So that'll awesome. point you right to the Facebook group. You can add yourself and either myself or an admin will accept that and then reach out to me with cool. any questions. I like that idea. Yeah. Hop to the group because Facebook groups are amazing and then you can network with more amazing people. So, right and people yeah. like Andy. Right on, Andy. Well, appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks so much for doing this. And uh, yeah. So we'll talk yeah, soon and, and we'll, we'll make some deals. Let's go make some deals. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. Now, if you don't know already, myself and my partner, Joe Fear, every single week we put together this killer weekly newsletter that's completely free. If you go to theweeklyprofit.com, you can get on this weekly newsletter. And what we do with this newsletter is we scour the internet. We read every piece of content, listen to blog posts, uh, check out new software and tools, and we distill down the best of the best into a weekly newsletter and deliver it directly to your inbox every single week. So head over to theweeklyprofit.com and make sure you're signed up to receive that weekly newsletter. You're going to love it. Thanks so much again for listening to the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. We'll see you in the next one.